Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Mike here, and welcome to our next lesson in the OpenGL series. In this lesson, before we even get to the coding, I just want to give you a little bit of a background so you can understand what OpenGL is and the history of OpenGL. So with that said, let me go ahead and switch to view here so we can go ahead and see exactly what OpenGL is. Now, you're going to notice what I did in this Google search here is that I searched for OpenGL specification. And what OpenGL really is, is just a specification. So if you go ahead and click on this first link here, you're going to notice OpenGL 4.6, which was the last released OpenGL version, that I have this huge sort of 850 page guide. Now, are you going to have to learn or memorize all of this? No, of course not. But the point is that there is a guide here and there is somewhere to look for various commands and to figure out how this API works. Now, there's a few things I want you to take away from this. One is just this picture here, which is going to start making a lot more sense as we dive further into this series here to understand OpenGL. But if I go ahead and skip to a few of the pages here and to the uh, introduction here, there is a nice section here that describes what is OpenGL graphics, what's the system. And for most of us here, what's going to be applicable is this sort of programmer's viewpoint of OpenGL. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this on the background if you want to read it or care to read it later. But the basic idea is for us as programmers, again, most people watching this series, is that OpenGL is going to be a series of graphics commands. And that means functions that we can call because it's a C programming based API that allow us to interact with our GPU. That is load data onto our GPU and then have it render or draw very quickly, much faster than if we were going to do this all on our CPU. See, that's the key to having a GPU to allow us to work with it faster. And that's what graphics APIs like OpenGL allow us to do. So from a programmer's view, that's all we really have to think about OpenGL as. And we'll have to understand a little bit about its structure and how it's organized to fully take use of it. But with that said, I want to go ahead and scroll down here and also see that from an implementer's view, in case you're somebody who's working on a team that implements or has implemented uh, OpenGL, really what you're looking at is here in this guide is that OpenGL is a specification. You see a bunch of smart people from companies and universities came together and they basically agreed this is what a graphics API should look like. And then they go and make sure that they can support these functions on their actual hardware and build the drivers and so on that allow the hardware and the software to interact and draw things. All right, so that's just to give you a little bit about what OpenGL is. It's not necessarily a library. Uh, per se, but it's really just a specification that folks implement, then they'll distribute out a library so you can use these functions. All right, so that's a little bit about what OpenGL is, just so you understand. But the history is also a little bit interesting to understand. So if you go to the Wikipedia page and just want to take a look at all the different versions here, or rather just to see when the initial re release was here, June 30 of 1992. So it's a very, very mature API. It's been around for a long time. And it's not getting as much updates um, recently because the last one was in 2017, but that's not to say that it's still not relevant. It's still going to be used. Folks are still using it and shipping it in commercial applications. So it's still something that is here to stay. Now, maybe in different series, we'll cover other APIs that are coming out like Vulkan, which are very exciting, but OpenGL is the place to start. And some of those reasons will become more apparent in this series for why you want to learn OpenGL today. It's a great library to get started with, and it handles a lot of the uh, dirty work, to say, of just getting started here and being able to interface with your graphics card. Okay, so folks, that's just a little bit of an introduction and two places where you can look to get started with OpenGL. Looking at the specification, which we will do as we learn different OpenGL commands, and the Wikipedia page will actually give you a little bit of the long and rich history about OpenGL, API wars, and all these sorts of things. But I hope that's starting to get you excited about OpenGL and just understanding that this is a uh, specification that many, many smart people have worked on. And it's a system that's worked well for many years and it's going to be supported for many years to come. All right, folks, with that said, we'll go ahead and move on to the next video. And I hope to see you there. And also, don't forget, if you're enjoying this series or don't want to miss any videos, make sure that you like and subscribe so you don't miss anything. All right, we'll see you in the comments below and in the next video.